All right, well, welcome to this week's Campaign Catch-Up. Joining me, David Brody, CBN Chief Political Analyst and host of DC Debrief. John Stolnes, gentlemen, um, it's, again, a lot to get to here. Let's start right in with the polls. Where are we at, John, with the latest on the polling data? <laughs> the polling data seems to tell us that the Democrats are still in a far better position than they were when Joe Biden was atop the ticket. Uh, <laughs> most of the real clear politics rolling averages has Kamala Harris leading nationally by one to two points. There might be a, a, a couple here and there that has Trump up by a point or two, but everything essentially is inside the margin of error nationally. And then if you look in the battleground states, again, looking at all the rolling averages over the last month or so, Harris leads in a number of different states, but again, just by a hair. On the other hand, in the states where Trump leads, it's just by a hair. Right now in Arizona, Trump, again, according to the rolling averages and in each poll, can, one might tell you he's up by four, another by two, another by five. Trump is up by one in Arizona. Uh, Harris is up by less than a percent in Nevada. Wisconsin, a point and a half. Michigan, a point. It's essentially a tie in Pennsylvania. North Carolina, Trump has a slight edge there. Georgia, Again, it's a virtual tie. So again, all these battleground states that these candidates are, are basically camping out in over the last week or so, and will continue to over the next couple of months, uh, the the numbers are so the numbers are tight. But it's clear Trump led pretty significantly in most, if not all, of those battleground states and nationally. And since Kamala Harris has entered the picture, the race has essentially become a coin flip. Uh, it's it based on what we what we're seeing right now. It, it, it's kind of it looks like a coin flip. Now, I will say, too, that Nate Silver of 538 uh, has his own metrics and his own way of taking a look at things. And he basically calculates the viable the viable options to get to 270, 270 electoral votes. And he has right now uh, Donald Trump's chances of victory at 58 percent compared to 41 and a half percent for Kamala Harris. So uh, according to 538, Trump's chances of winning are, are stronger than Kamala Harris's. But again, that number has shrunk uh, quite a bit since Harris became the nominee. So, I mean, it's right. just I think at the end of the day, the takeaway <laughs> is that as we stand about 70 days away, 60 days away from 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 Election Day, is that everything is still incredibly yeah. fluid. Yeah. And that is I'll get your reaction in a second, David. I was going to say, for those of you who are not aware with 538 and Nate Silver, I mean, he's a well-respected data and numbers guy, runs right. all these analytics and different things that are kind of. Uh, does unusual ways that, that people uh, that, that the regular pollsters don't typically do. So with that out of the way, David, your response to the, the polling. Well, there's a, a couple things going on. Uh, first of all, Trump uh, historically in 2016 and 2020 uh, polls bet or excuse me, actually has a better share of the vote than he polls. Uh, so some people, believe it or not, are still kind of like, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump and I'm not going to tell you a pollster. Uh, and there's that out there. Uh, historically, it's been anywhere from two to five percent. So if, if you factor that in, if that happens again, uh, that's bad news for Harris. Also, let's be clear. I mean, one of the problems that Democrats have here and what the media has helped them. Right. But one of the problems Democrats have here is that they're buying into this idea that. Uh, Kamala Harris has momentum and energy. Well, yeah, you do next to cardboard, which was Joe Biden. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, anybody, you know, that's like me and Brad Pitt. I'm a downgrade. OK, you know, that's very clear. But the point is, is that if you're comparing to Biden, sure, there's going to be momentum and, and enthusiasm. That's a given. Uh, the, the problem here is, is that the, the, the poll numbers are a problem for her in a lot of different ways. And here's why. Because nationally, uh, Donald Trump was losing the national vote uh, by, by four points to, uh, to Joe Biden, uh, by eight points to Hillary Clinton, uh, and he won. Uh, so the point is, is that you don't really look at the national number. Uh, Kamala Harris's uh, plus minus on the national number needs to be probably plus five in those national numbers for her to be really kind of in striking distance to win. She's not. She's a plus maybe two, maybe two. So that would suggest, and maybe why Nate Silver is doing the 58, 41 and a half, is because if you, if you kind of drill down into those numbers, they're not as good as people say. Now, once again, to be clear, that's obviously not partisan for me, but either way, it's just reality. Uh, and here's the other reality. If you look at Biden's numbers compared to Harris's numbers this time around, as it relates to, you know, white men, uh, you, you look at Hispanics and, and black voters as well. She is not doing as well as Joe Biden in those certain demographics. Has she done better 
as it relates to Biden in 2024? Yes, but I'm talking about 2020. If you compare 2020 Biden to 2024 Kamala Harris, she's down by a few percentage points uh, in each one of those demographics. So, you know, when you put the whole thing together, it, it, it probably doesn't bode too well for her. Here's the one last problem. We've seen prompter Kamala, but we haven't quite seen uh, unscripted Kamala. Uh, even the interview she did, it was a, it was a tag team. It was a t she's never done a one on one interview. She hasn't done a press conference. So let's see what happens after the debate. I, I think at that point, we'll have a better sense of uh, the, the polls and the needle. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and and when you look at some of these uh, swing states as well, I mean, look at Michigan, for example. I saw uh, something talking about how the Muslim vote there, obviously Dearborn, you've got a high uh, Muslim population in Michigan, and they're saying that perhaps she's having a little struggle here, Harris, that is, because some of the far left uh, on that side are, are don't feel like she's done enough uh, with on the Hamas-Israel uh, subject. But then, then you have a lot of other Muslims who don't want you to give any credence to the Hamas type protesters, and so they're not gonna, they're gonna, you know, not necessarily vote that way. So that could be an issue uh, in Michigan. So there's a lot of little things like that to look for. Can we talk, guys, real quick? Because I don't think we've been on since this interview. I just let's get your guys' reaction to how the uh, Harris Walls interview uh, went, John. Well, I mean, how did it go? I, I think if the idea was for Harris to just check a box, then she checked a box. And, you know, Harris and Walls doing an interview together. It, we've seen Trump and Vance do an interview together, but they, we've also seen them do interviews apart from each other. And we haven't seen that uh, with Harris and, and Walls just yet. So, of course, that's that's the next step. And we're not going to see that before the debate. Um, I think the interview for what the Harris campaign wanted worked out the way they wanted it to work out. She didn't make any big gaffes. She didn't make any big stumbles. There wasn't a soundbite that people are going to look at and point and laugh at. There's no meme, I think, that that came out of that particular um, that particular interview. Uh, it was clear that that was the, the main idea there was just just don't say something to uh, affect the momentum in a negative way. Make sure the momentum keeps moving forward, move the ball forward. And I thought Dana Bash asked asked fine questions. I don't it was not a. Um, a pressure packed interview, but uh, both of for uh, both of these candidates right now are are talking to people who are generally going to ask them friendly questions. Donald Trump did a town hall with Sean Hannity this week. I mean, it's just that that's kind of where we are at this stage of things. Neither candidate really needs to go talk to somebody who's going to give them a hard time. That's going to come on Tuesday night at the debate for the interview. I think she acquitted herself in the way in which her campaign wanted her to acquit herself, which she looked like someone who was a legitimate presidential candidate, didn't say anything to hurt her campaign. And generally speaking, the interview was forgotten about a minute after it happened, which in, in that kind of a scenario, I think is probably a win for her. <laughs> I kind of agree with that. I mean, she checked the box. I mean, look, it's like the, 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 I, I've compared the interview to like uh, grilled chicken and broccoli. You know, it's like womp womp, you know, it's like, okay, there's no salt on the grilled chicken either. I mean, it's just kind of pedestrian. There's no sauce. Sorry, I'm getting into food analogies now. <laughs> You're um, hungry. Uh, yeah, I clearly am hungry. <laughs> uh, I think that that's pretty obvious. Uh, but look, beyond all of that, I think that's what that's what it was. And so uh, Dana Bash, uh, it, it was a relatively softball interview. Now to to. In her defense, when you have, what it was, it, 18, 20, 24 minutes or whatever, and you've got so much to get through, you know, it, it's tough. But at the same time, there were so many questions that she should have asked. The, the, the one glaring omission was, how do you not push her on uh, what did you know and when did you know it about Biden and his mental acuity? I mean, you had to do that one. Uh, and she did ask a question about it, but not like that. And then there wasn't any follow-up. So uh, it was more kind of like the TikTok on, uh, you know, when did you know? What was the phone call like? And, and which was interesting, but it wasn't any anything hard hitting. So right. I don't know. The other thing is the visuals. I mean, shame on the campaign. Shame on shame on the campaign on um, putting her on visual in visuals like that. I don't think she looked very good in the interview. I thought the lighting was bad. But beyond that, Tim Walls uh, just, you know, he looked like he was, you know, I, what is it like she was in a deposition and he was her, her lawyer. I mean, it just kind of looked like, you know, he was above both of them, like in height and stature, the whole thing. She looks small in the interview. And that's not what you want visually. Yeah. Anyhow, all that to say, who cares? She checked a box. Yeah. And I think you're right, John. The, the It was forgotten about very quickly. The only I think the only clip I saw of getting any momentum on it was Walls trying to answer 
you know, the weapons of war thing. And he, mm-hmm. he kind of had a goofy answer about how, you know, his mom didn't you know, teach well, him grammar well or something the like that. One, the, the values clip yeah. was interesting only because it gave the Trump campaign an opportunity to say, oh, yeah, that's that's true. She hasn't changed her values. She's a San Francisco liberal. So so I think that kind of teed them up a little bit for that. Yeah. Right. And and, and Trump has been um, making some hay on the fracking comments. And that was one right. of the areas where Dana Bash really did kind of push back a little bit. It's like she in 2019 vehemently said that she would ban fracking and then in 2020 on the campaign trail she said she wasn't in favor of banning fracking and uh in the interview she said that's been my position since 2020 kind of ignoring the fact that before 2020 she was certainly had a much harder line against fracking and she she tried to talk about the fact that she feels like the the things that they did in the biden administration uh for clean energy policy has made enough improvement or done enough good that she she no longer feels that fracking is is uh, is a problem for for the climate and and here's the deal like just say that J- just just if you reverse your right. this, goes for, this goes for every candidate out there if you reverse your position on something that is not necessarily a black mark against you that does not necessarily mean that you can't be trusted as human beings, we should be able to change our minds when presented with new information and new facts. And sometimes the world changes. And so, you know, you can adjust as long as you have a, a rational, reasonable, well thought out reason for your yeah. change, then then just go ahead and own it. Yeah, I believe right. in, 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 in fracking in 2019. The evidence has shown me over these last few years, I was wrong about that. Now I'm very much in favor of it. Uh, just right. real quick, uh, you're right, John, own it. And I, one last thing, 30 seconds or less. Uh, she said, my values haven't changed, but she changed her position on fracking. That doesn't make sense because if the value behind fracking is that you got you have concerns about environmental damage, the environment, that's the value. Well, if that's the value and fracking, if you're a leftist liberal, believe that it hurts the environment, then how can you change your position if your value stays the same? It didn't make any sense. And there wasn't any follow up there. But once again, I understand you have limited time. Listen, I get limited time. I know I've been in that situation. Yeah, but you're I, criticized over it, by the yeah. way. And 100 percent, John, I, I, I mean, you've got you've got to have a rationale. You, your rationale cannot be at the end of the day. Just, well, I need voters from the Midwest. <laughs> I need <laughs> right. Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> right. <No. laughs> so it can't be that. But let, let's talk about this debate because it is uh, rapidly approaching now. It seemed far off. But now here we are. Is this thing going to happen? Because I feel like this has kind of been the Katie Hobbs uh, strategy for uh, Harris a a lot of the way here, kind of just trying to duck and cover and run this thing across the finish line. And so only one on the book so far out of usually we get three at this time of year. But uh, what's up with the debates and uh, is it going to happen? And are we going to get any more or, or whatever else we can add about the debates here? Well, uh, this debate's going to happen. John, do you, do you see it any differently? I mean, this debate's going to happen. I mean, I, I think the odds of it not happening are, are really small. The, the argument that they seem to be having is whether or not to mute the microphones when the other candidate is speaking. That seems a small thing to blow up an interview or uh, blow up the debate over. But that okay. being said, <laughs> since when are we beyond being petty in politics? <laughs> you know, so. Right. right. Well, let me also say there, there's a there's an argument within the muted mic uh, situation, to be clear, because what, what the Kamala Harris campaign wants on the debate stage is her to look at Trump and say, excuse me, I'm talking. Excuse me, I'm talking. That's what they want. Now, if they have muted mics, that that won't be possible. But they want the, you know, I am woman, woman, hear me roar, 1970s Helen Reddy moment. That's what sorry, I dated myself. I'm really old. <laughs> but that that's what they want. That is what they want. And if you look at the Mike Pence uh, interview, yeah. uh, excuse me, she, debate, she it was the same thing. She did over and, and over, she yeah. did it over and over again. That's what they want because that's the old, I'm standing up to the tough Trump guy and that, that'll help her. We'll see if that actually happens. But no, I think the, the debate's going to happen. I don't, I think this will be the only one presidential, from a presidential standpoint. Uh, and of course, there'll be a vice presidential debate. So we know that's coming too. I mean, right. I think from I think from a viewer's standpoint, Dan, it, it's I, I enjoyed not having people talking over each yes. other. Yes, uh, me and, too. And I, I did too. And, <laughs> and as a and as a viewer, I'm not so sure that stop you know saying I'm talking you know somebody saying like I'm talking here you know I'm not so sure that comes across as well as maybe she thinks it will come across. You know, I know she did it to to Governor Pence, um, former Vice President Pence. You know, when when he was I don't know why I called him Governor Pence, former <laughs> Vice President Pence, uh, when when they were uh, in their debate. Um, but I don't know that that's I don't know that that's the right look for her right now. I mean, it's I don't think 
I, I think her being nasty on the debate stage or either of them being nasty on the debate stage is 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 not good for for either of them among independents among the few voters out there <laughs> who haven't made up their mind yet right yeah. so, so you know it's yeah well let me ask you this where where is it right now is it are are they muted or are they not muted how how is the contract set They're up at muted. this point They're see muted. and i and I see if you guys disagree with this, but I think that this favors Trump because it stops Trump from meandering. Uh, he he's very good at hitting his marks. I mean, he's a television guy. He's a, a TV personality in the in the debate with Biden. He was able to sum up his points and just hit the mark and get out on a you know, on like a just a quick kind of buttoned up point. Whereas if you let him go and he goes and he wants to interrupt, like you said, it could play into uh, Harris's well, favor. Do you guys agree with that, that I, that this kind of helps? Trump? I do. I do. I also think it also helps Trump on the visual. Uh, in other words, on the double box. Uh, so remember, the double box with Biden was every time Biden was going off into Never Never Land, it would was be Trump, Trump would do this, yeah. right? Trump would do this. <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of this from 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 Trump. Trump is the apprentice, right? I mean, he's yep. that guy. He's yep. Mr. TV. He knows the he knows where the camera is. He knows where the red light is, and he knows the time. More importantly, to do this, mm -hmm. he knows. I think it helps him. I'll also say, too, I, I think in the debate with Biden, Trump could see that Biden was hurting himself more than Trump could possibly hurt him right. by making facial expressions, uh, by trying to interrupt, by trying to talk over the muted mic. Just by let him go. Distract him. He just let him go. And I don't think he ha he'll be able to do that with, with Kamala Harris. I don't think he'll be able to resist it because Kamala Harris will have more energy she'll be i mean again it's difficult not to have more energy than what we saw from president <laughs> right Biden. yes and i don't well, mean to be mean when i say that no it's but just, it's true it's, it's just it's true just, it's just true and I, I think harris is going to be more engaged i think she's going to have uh she's going to have more to say she's going to challenge trump in a in a way that he'll be able to make sense of it i think there were genuinely portions of the debate that he did not understand what biden was trying to say i don't think they're going to have that issue this time around yeah. Well, let me just quickly say that there is the on the flip side of that, there's the word salad quotient. In other words, it, it, you know, if you let Kamala go for 60 seconds, 90 seconds, when does it hit uh, coconuts and, and yellow school buses? Uh, when does it become the unburdened of what I've been burdened of the not burdened? You know, in other words, where, when does that happen now? Uh, you know, maybe she'll have none of that. Uh, the campaign hopes that that's the case. But you run the risk. If you're not going back and forth and you've got 90 seconds to talk, one last thing, if she's asked an esoteric question, that's what I'm waiting for. In other words, a, a question like this, what is the rationale for your campaign? What is, you know, something along those lines, you know, kind of like, what's the meaning of life? You know, it's that type of stuff where you go, um, um, think quickly. Um, and that is the type of stuff where she's gotten word salad, not on policy, not on the granular, but on stuff that's a little bit more um uh, esoteric open-ended yeah a little open-ended yeah, yeah, open-ended you know what wh why should the american voter vote for you and then you right. know that, that sort of thing and then what what does it go into and, and maybe she'll be prepared for those i mean it's it's much more possible i think like john said that that she'll be pr more prepared for those than that and be able to execute uh, better than joe biden was so all right guys uh i wanted to touch real quick on a couple of oddball things that are happening I mean, you see all kinds of weird things going on in campaigns uh, all the time, especially now with these packs and everything else that create ads. But in Philadelphia, there was a, an advertisement going around that showed Kamala Harris in it. There it is right there in an Eagles helmet. <laughs> and uh, I, I forget what the wording of it was or if there was anything at all or if it just said Kamala. And the Eagles actually had to come out and make a statement saying, ah, uh, we didn't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're not making uh, campaign selections here. And um, and so, yeah, what's your guys reaction to this? John, you take this one. And John being an as, Eagles guy here as as a as a guy who was uh, who's. Uh, born and bred just outside Philadelphia in Delaware County. I've lived here in D.C. for 20 years, but first 27 years I was I was in that in that world, and I'm a <laughs> diehard Eagles fan. Um, I you know I can't. It would be it would be dumb for the Eagles to take a an official stance on 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 the race. Now that being said, the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl back in 2017, defeating Tom Brady in humiliating fashion in Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just to lay that out there, um, 
they did not accept a visit to the White House while Donald Trump was president. Now, so I, I don't think, now there were some extenuating circumstances and, and all of that, but I have an idea, I think, which way uh, the ownership, where, where their political affiliations may lie, but certainly to go on the record like this and to, and to say we are supporting Kamala Harris would be detrimental. They would lose much of their fan base if they were to do that. So I have no doubt that the Philadelphia Eagles as an organization had nothing to do with this. I won't say, and I have no information on this whatsoever, who's to say that someone inside the Eagles didn't work with a pack or didn't work with somebody else to, to make something like this happen. We have no way of knowing that. It could just be somebody random got the Eagles logo, made a, an animated picture and, and decided to put it all over the SEPTA bus terminals around the city. It was, it's just, it's a, this just shows you how wacky and weird things get in battleground states within two months of a hotly <laughs> contested election. Well, and look, I mean, and I will get your reaction in a second, David, but the, it's Philadelphia. I mean, you know, you're you're putting that stuff up around Philadelphia. Philadelphia is going to go a high percentage towards uh, Kamala Harris anyway. So, I yeah. mean, I'm not sure, you know, what that's going to do for you particularly. Right. But, David, your response. Well, she's going to get the high percentage but uh, in, in the Philadelphia area. But let's remember, I mean, there's a difference between 84 percent, 87 percent. There's a difference between 88 percent, 91 percent. And she, she she's got to get the big turnout in Philadelphia uh, county specifically. Um, and, and of course, some of the other uh, suburbs, Chester and others. Uh, but look, uh, it, <laughs> it's kind of a goofy story. I mean, I thought Jalen Hurts uh, at first was replaced uh, by Kamala Harris. <laughs> and then, then I realized that wasn't true. Uh, but look, she could be the first uh, female uh, quarterback in NFL history. So, you know, you've got to give her some credit on that. Uh, she, you know, she break the glass ceiling in the NFL. Hey. So good for her. Listen, yeah. for all of us fans of not non-Eagles fans, you know, like Washington fans, maybe like this particular individual might, may yeah. or may not be, uh, uh, I, th yeah. I think Harris deserves a shot to be the quarterback of the Eagles. I mean, I think let, let's go for some equality here uh, in the, in the Philadelphia brass. If they, if they, if that's what they're all about. So uh, I'm all for that. She'd yeah, be better too. than, she'd be better than Kenny Pickett. They're back. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Shots fired. Well, oh, hopefully, hopefully that one doesn't make it back to Kenny, John. I don't know. If, yeah, uh, any... Probably not. Yeah. All right. But all right, gentlemen, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you uh, at this debate um, when it, when it finally happens. We're going to uh, be there. We're gonna, yeah. right, John. We're gonna be there. We're gonna be yep. eating galore. I mean, we're gonna be eating a lot. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's why I look forward to going on the road uh, to spend per diem and mm -hmm. to eat a lot. That's pretty you much really, my two. You minutes. really are hungry. I mean, we weren't just kidding about that before. <laughs> oh, no. This is two times in the same interview now. Right. He's going to food, so we'll let David okay. get out of here and get something to eat. And David Brody, John Stolness. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank See you. Ya. Thanks, Dan.